Welcome back to the Gift Up Podcast. Let's get to the week six Vegas spread picks. I hope everybody enjoyed the games this past weekend. I certainly did from the one o'clock games leading right up into that big money pick victory win with the Bills beating Kansas City. So let's keep that momentum going into week six. Our first money pick, Tampa minus seven versus Philly Thursday night football. I got Tampa Bay to win and cover. I thought the point spread was going to be eight and a half. So they want to give us that extra point and a half in this game. And I'm just looking at it from the perspective of Tampa Bay being better on every level of the field pretty much. And if they come ready to play, I don't see how they don't cover that. I don't see how this isn't another blowout type victory. The only thing that I could say that could keep it from coming through is if Philadelphia can control the clock a little bit on the offensive side, get that read option play action system going with Jalen Hurts, and then they're able to take advantage of Tampa Bay secondary. But I'm banking on that Tampa Bay pass rush to be ready to go. And I think they're going to be all over Hurts in that game. And then Brady being on a short week, he's going to stay in rhythm with his receivers. You see what he's doing with Antonio Brown right now. I think that's just going to continue. And it's going to be very hard for Philadelphia to keep up with that. Next game, Miami minus three and a half versus Jacksonville. I have Jacksonville to cover Miami to win. Bottom line is it's just too many points. And I don't trust Jacoby Brissett. He goes stagnant way too much. This Miami offense outside of the receiver position isn't something to be feared. So I don't see any reason why Jacksonville can't play back a little bit, uh, put a little bit of pressure on Brissett, and then the rest is history. Uh, I could see the Jacksonville offense doing enough to keep it close. They should be able to pound the rock with Robinson, get that pressure off of Trevor Lawrence. And we have seen Lawrence have some success when he's not under pressure all the time. So that's what I'm banking on in that game. And we got to figure Jacksonville's got to be desperate at this point. They got to have something up their sleeve in this game. They can't continue the way they are. And this is a game where they have a chance to win. They have a chance to fight in this game. So uh, with the three and a half, I feel it's pretty comfortable. It's I thought it was going to be Miami minus two and a half. So again, another game where they want to give us an extra point. I'll take it. Next game, Houston plus 10 versus Indy. I have Houston to cover, Indy to win. Really, for me, Houston has a chance to even upset Indy in this game. I like him with the 10, but that Indy defense has a lot of issues. And offensively, they don't have a lot of weapons to throw to. So Houston's defense, I think they can stack the box, stop Taylor, put some pressure on Carson Wentz, make life tough on him. And then offensively for Houston, like I said, that Indy defense is hurting in the secondary and on the defensive line. I don't see any reason why Houston can't get the run game going, get pressure off of Mills at quarterback, get some play action and take advantage of that secondary. I think they can keep it within 10. Uh, and again, possibly maybe even have a chance for an upset. Next game, Green Bay minus four and a half versus the Bears. I have Green Bay to win, Bears to cover. That Green Bay defense has shown a lot of vulnerability, especially against the run. And that's really how the Bears want to attack offensively. They're going to try to run it uh, with their quarterback and the running back. So they're going to be trying to ground and pound it, then get play action and base everything off of that. Um, I could see Fields having some big runs in this game. So Bears take it to the Packers defense. And then that Green Bay offensive line, ton of issues. We've seen them. You saw how much pressure Aaron Rodgers was under this past week against the Bengals. We know the Bears have a strong front seven. I don't see any reason why they can't put pressure on Rodgers again this week. I like them with the points. Next game, KC minus six and a half versus Washington. I have KC to win, Washington to cover. Just a little bit too many points to give Washington. And we've seen that KC defense struggle so much so far this year. And Washington has a lot to offer offensively. You know, their offensive line might not be great, but they can pound the rock. Okay, so they get the run game going with Gibson. I can see that happening. All they need is a little bit of play action, and they can take advantage of that KC secondary. Mick Lauren is playing out of his mind right now, and Heineke's on top of his game. I think they can get that done with, with a six and a half. Next game, our second money pick, Minnesota plus one versus Carolina. I got Minnesota to win and cover. I really think that Minnesota should be giving the points here. Not sure how we're getting an extra one, so I'm going to jump on that. I'm going to take it. 
we've seen the issues with Carolina. We don't know if McCaffrey is going to be healthy next week. Sam Darnold, turnover issues. That's a big problem. Uh, and then defensively for Carolina, uh, they've had some issues as well. They are getting better. I mean, obviously they made a lot of moves in the secondary. And once that all comes together, I think it's going to be, I think their defense will take the next step. But in the meantime, you know, while they're waiting for Gilmore to get on the field, where the, while they're waiting for Henderson to kind of come into the fold and, you know, learn the playbook, I think Minnesota is going to be able to take advantage of that defense. Pound it. You know, Delvin Cook should be back next week. Uh, Kirk Cousins with play action. Thielen and Jefferson on the outside. I think Minnesota has enough weapons to get this done. And then again, we, I mentioned Darnold with the turnovers. I think Zimmer can put a game plan into place here. Um, they got the players on the D-line to put on some pressure. They got decent players in the secondary. So for me, Minnesota is the better football team. They get it done. Next game, our third money pick, Chargers plus three and a half versus Baltimore. I got the Chargers to win and cover. I'm not saying Baltimore doesn't have a chance to win that game because the Ravens are a playoff team. Uh, but really, this should be a pick game. I don't think the Chargers should be getting three and a half points. That's just way too much for me for a team that's on fire right now offensively. So, for me, as long as they come out in this game with their offense the way they've been playing, they should be able to outscore Baltimore. Next game, our next money pick, Cincy minus three and a half versus Detroit. I got Cincinnati to win and cover, providing that Joe Burrow plays. Keep an eye on that game uh, as far as the injuries go. But Detroit is just so depleted right now. There's injuries on the offensive line. They've lost numerous defensive players. Cincinnati just put up a hell of a fight against Green Bay. So, again, as long as everybody's healthy for Cincinnati, they really should steamroll Detroit. You guys see how good Jamar Chase is playing right now. It's absolutely amazing uh, as a rookie how good he's playing. Detroit doesn't have anybody in that secondary to go against him. So uh, that's just one matchup alone. But then you start to count in like Joe Mixon pounding the rock. You know, Detroit with the – they don't – again, they traded Jamie Collins. O'Quar is on the IR. They don't have anything left since he should have no problem. Next game, and this is one that I don't like this next one just simply because it's too many points. And it's just one that I'm personally going to stay away from. But Rams minus 10 and a half versus the Giants. I have the Rams to win, Giants to cover, providing that Daniel Jones plays. If Daniel Jones does not play and it's Mike Glennon, Either bet the Rams or don't bet it at all because my, I can't put my money on Mike Glennon. So that's why I'm saying it's probably a good game just to stay away from. But again, if Daniel Jones plays, you have to take the points because he can keep games close. Even with the injury to Galladay, even with the injury to Saquon Barkley, Daniel Jones with a little bit of time in the pocket makes plays. He does. He's legit. Uh, so just pay attention to that injury in that game. Again, I'll repeat myself. If Daniel Jones plays, I would take the Giants to cover that 10.5. If he doesn't, then you have to go with the Rams or don't bet it at all. Pretty straightforward. Next game, our next money pick, Arizona plus 2.5 versus the Browns. I have the Browns to win and cover. Uh, that was a tough loss against the Chargers. Early on in that game, I was like saying, yeah, I mean, we got that money pick. But then the Chargers came back. There were some injuries to the Browns defensively. Obviously, Clowney didn't play in that game. And then uh, Awuzu Koromoa got knocked out of that game at linebacker as well. Um, so next week, hopefully everybody's healthy for the Browns. And as long as they are, I still respect them. I think that defense is going to find themselves this year. They got a lot of good playmakers. Um, I think they should be giving Arizona a lot more points than what they're giving. Less than a field goal, I'm going to take the Browns to win and cover. They really should have no problem getting the run game going with Chubb. Play action for Baker Mayfield. They should be able to open things up. And again, defensively, for me, as long as everybody's healthy and on the field, uh, they're just too deep of a team defensively. They're going to show up for this game. They got the pieces in the secondary to go against the Arizona receiving core that's been very good this year. They should be able to put on some pressure uh, on Kyler Murray as well. Again, you know, as long as Clowney plays and Miles Garrett isn't banged up, they should have no problem winning that game at home. Next game, our next money pick, Vegas plus three versus Denver. I have no idea how Vegas isn't giving the points to Denver in this game, but they want to give me Vegas with a field goal. I'm taking it. I'm pretty sure Vegas is going to want to redeem themselves. 
It's not like they have to worry about an elite pass rush. I know Denver's got Von Miller, but you take care of him. Derek Carr is going to have time in the pocket. He's going to get it to Waller. He's going to get it to Edwards, and he's going to get it to Ruggs and the rest of his receivers down the field. I see that happening in this game. Um, Defensively, yes, Vegas has issues, but Teddy Bridgewater is the quarterback for Denver. I'm not worried about it. All they have is Sutton to throw the football to. As long as they can stop the run a little bit, force some tough throws from Bridgewater, they're going to get that done. I feel good about that money pick. Next game, I really like this game as well. Um, but try to get this one in before it goes up to five or more because then I'm going in the other direction with the Pats. But we got Dallas minus four versus New England. And bottom line is Dallas is on fire right now. They should have no problem running the rock with Zeke. No problem getting the football down the field against that Pat secondary with players like C.D. Lamb playing out of his mind right now. Um, you know, Dak not under a lot of pressure. He's been playing really good. So really, Dallas should have no problems. Plus, I really respect uh, Dallas's secondary and their linebacking core. They're really good in the pass coverage. And then Randy Gregory. Now, this is where the NFL really needs to be a little bit more lenient with who their superstars they talk about are. Now, Randy Gregory might not be a poster child. You know, he might not look good selling a box of Wheaties, but he is dominant. That game against the Giants, he was behind the line of scrimmage almost every single play, disrupting things. And I think that's going to continue. DeMarcus Lawrence is out. That's a big loss. But you know what? You still got Randy Gregory, who's playing extremely good. Now, I'm not saying Randy Gregory is like T.J. Watt. You know, he doesn't make like those big game-breaking plays. But he's consistent like T.J. Watt. He is disrupting offensive lines left and right. Matt Jones being a stationary pocket quarterback. Randy Gregory's coming for him. So I really like that Dallas game. It's, that's a borderline money pick still. But again, get that before it goes to five or more. Two more left on the docket. Seattle plus five versus Pittsburgh. I got Seattle to cover. Pittsburgh to win. Even with the injuries going on with Seattle, I still think Pete Carroll can cook up a defense. An aging Big Ben. That offensive line has a lot of issues for the Steelers. I think Seattle's defense can keep this close. Yes, I am worried about Geno Smith starting. That's I'm not making this a money pick. It's something. It's a game where you don't have to bet this one this week. There's a lot of other meat to choose from, but I do like Seattle with that five for those reasons. I think there's for me, Geno Smith isn't going to have to do a lot in this game because I think the Seattle defense can keep Big Ben in check. That's how I'm looking at that game. It's just a little bit too much with the points. And we're going to cap this off with Buffalo minus five versus Tennessee. I got Buffalo to win, Tennessee to cover. The one thing about the Bills that's an issue still is defensively, they have a hard time stopping bigger physical type run games. Tennessee has that. They are the Bills kryptonite. They have Derrick Henry. And despite the rest of the injuries and things that are going on for Tennessee, if they can control the clock and keep Josh Allen on the sideline, They're going to have a chance in this game. And because of that, because of that mismatch with Derrick Henry pounding the rock, I think they can keep it in striking distance. So with that, make sure to hit the like button, share the videos, and subscribe. I'll put my record on the year so far in the description along uh, with the money picks. And then the rest of this week, uh, I'll be coming with our usual, you know, the over-unders, the teasers, all of that. I'll probably do one video or two videos a day. And we'll keep this train rolling. So with that, make sure to hit the like button, share the videos, and subscribe.